Native Americans in the area around Mount Shasta say that the area above the tree line is sacred, and they warn people, do not go up there. Is that so? Right, which makes it not surprising to learn of the number of disappearances that have taken place up there. So Mount Shasta is one of these hot spots for disappearing people then? Exactly. Yes, Siskiyou County is the location that Carl disappeared in. Since 2009, Former police detective Dave Politis has been applying his professional investigative training, attempting to solve mysterious missing persons cases all around the country. In 10 plus years, I've looked at over 5,000 search and rescue cases. And in those 1,200 are unexplained. And I mean that cases of possible animal predation have been vetted out. Incidents of mental health, suicide, were vetted out. And what you're left with is a complete void of rational explanation. The area around Mount Shasta has many unusual disappearances. One of the most baffling disappearances that Dave has been focusing on was reported on Mount Shasta in 1999. On May 25th, Three experienced hikers, Carl Landers, Milt Gaines, and Barry Gilmore, set off from Mount Shasta's Bunny Flat Trailhead towards the summit. The guys got up to a place called 5050. It was a place where hikers that wanted to summit would either camp there at the next stop called Lake Helen for the night. The next morning they get up, the wind's howling. The guys were putting the tent together and were stashing it for their climb, and they saw that Carl was looking cold. And so they said, hey, why don't you go to Lake Helens and we'll meet you there. And Carl took off walking. Shortly after Carl left the 50-50 campsite, Milton Berry followed. But when they arrived at Lake Helen, just 650 feet away, Carl was nowhere to be found. Milt Gaines, Carl's partner, got there, and he didn't see Carl, and now he's confused because there's no place between 5050 and Lake Helen to disappear. There's no obstructions. You're above timberline. There's no big, huge boulders that are going to get in your way, and it's a solid snow field with no crevices. And that started a week-long search and rescue that would rival any anyone knew about. Now, one of the things that was done on the Landers case is that they checked with U.S. Geological Survey for seismic activity on the mountain. The reason they did that is that sometimes there's a, a avalanche of rock, and maybe the climber was covered by the rock and you wouldn't find him. Now, during the time that Carl was gone, there was no seismic activity. So they know that Carl wasn't covered by rocks. Remarkably, in the more than 20 years since Carl's disappearance, no one has found any clues that could explain what happened to him. I don't know how many people have been up avalanche gulls, but uh, nothing has been found. No metal ice axe, no metal crampons, no colorful nylon pack or coat, or black pants, or plastic boots, nothing. The search and rescue coordinator on this event was an individual named Grizz Adams. Grizz had been doing this for 30 plus years. Grizz said, Dave, I guarantee Carl isn't on that mountain. He either went up or he went in, but he isn't on. Those were his words. I think that the comment tells you that there were few options for a rational explanation.